What's up guys, Bobby here with a brand new video. It's been a while since I created anything on here. Nevertheless, I wanted to make this video really bad because I think today's topic can be really helpful to a lot of you out there. Paul from Flixer reached out to me and told me about his cloud-based editing software. Now hold on, this is not going to be just an advertisement for his product. I think what a lot of people struggle with when they try to create videos is the performance of their computers. Hardware is getting hot, fans kick in and render times are horrendous. And that's why I thought cloud-based editing could actually be really beneficial for those people. It's not like cloud-based gaming that failed because of the input delays and frame issues. When editing, you usually work slow and don't need ultra fast response times like with gaming. So the basic idea sounds like a lot of fun and potential to me. That's why I thought let's create a short video together, unscripted, with me never working with Flixer before and see how user friendly it is and what it has to offer. And also check out the render time compared to a regular editing program like Camtasia Studio. So let's hop in and see how to go So within Flixier, I have the ability to create a new project. We're going to do that and see how everything looks like. I just had a brief look at the timeline and I can already tell it's actually quite awesome. So yeah, we have the ability to put in a project name. I'm going to call this project just car project and then we can pick a format for our video it's really nice that we have the ability to to preview our presets and have a brief description on uh, what it's good for i'm gonna pick widescreen good for youtube and general videos and as you can see the timeline already looks very similar to to a lot of editing softwares out there what's a good thing now um, I'm able to import my footage very quickly because I tried that before and it's insane how fast it actually is. So I'm going to show you how this works. So we click on import, we are able to browse different uh, sources where we could import our footage from. So for example, we will be able to import from Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive or just our device. Now, something I have been being curious about this is how fast would it actually be? Because we are uploading footage to this cloud-based editing software. And um, I might thought this uh, could be hard for the editing software, especially when we're uploading a lot of clips. Now, let's check out this folder. I created a couple of folders and here's a general tip for you guys. If you're starting off creating content and maybe even becoming a filmmaker, always try to name your folders after the things you've shot, as well as include frame rates and resolutions. This will make it easier for you to keep uh, being organized. So as you can see within the standing folder, there are a lot of shots from the car, from close-ups to uh, mediums to wide shots. And we are just going to import all of these clips. So let's see how this works. And as you can see, it takes just a couple of seconds of getting all the clips in and then we hit import all. And when I saw this, and as I said, I'm absolutely new to the interface. I just 
clicked in to see if I'm able to work with it and how it will feel, but it's insane. As you can see, the uploads are super, super quick. And these clips are not just one second and third seconds. They are even longer, but it's, it's ridiculous to me how fast this actually is. Now, these are some folders I've created previously, but I'm sure we can just delete them like that. Yeah, perfect. I'm just gonna, going to delete those folders and create a new one, new folder. And I gotta be honest with you guys, uh, I'm just going to type in standing, wait, standing shots. Um, it's super important. And here's a, another pro tip from me to keep being organized. No matter if you're working with Vegas, Premiere, Camtasia, uh, or Flixia right here, you should always gather your footage within folders and sort things. This will help you quite a lot and you will be able to get through your footage a lot more easily than when you have tons of clips and you have no clue where you're going. Um, I'm talking way too much. We're just going to pick one of these clips, drag it into the timeline and see how smooth it actually goes. I'm, I'm dragging in multiple clips. Let's just go like that. Three clips. Let's go to the beginning and the preview is super smooth. That's really cool. Now you are able to, to show multiple clips in the preview. And this is not just in the preview. If you decide you, you want to do like a comparison video of two different screens, then you are easily able to do that by just dragging the clips on top of each other and then placing them into the right corners, scaling them properly. And you will be able to see that by these yellow marks that are properly scaled. And then we are able to, now I'm clicking a little bit you know, I'm still used to clicking up here because of Premiere, but then you are able to preview two clips at a time. We could even go for free if we want to, and it plays perfectly. It really plays very smoothly, what's super awesome to me. I think um, it's, it's actually very well done and can be really helpful. Now let's move on and see what we else have. We have stock, what's also really useful to a lot of people out there because stock footage can be either really expensive or hard to find in general because sometimes you just need an office pick like I'm going to look up one right now. And I want this minimal office pick right here. Now we are able to adjust that so it actually fits the whole frame and we are able to use it right off the bat. We don't have any ugly watermarks or anything that is like interfering. What's really, really cool. I like that. And you have like a huge library that you can look through without any fees that you have to pay extra for stock images or anything like that. Same goes for audio. What's really cool if you need like some kind of track that you can use for your YouTube video, you just pick up one right here. What we're not going to do because we are going to actually import our own music just to show you that it works just the same as with video footage. I picked up this song from the YouTube library. This takes just a little longer, obviously, because it's a little longer in size. And then we just drag it below. It's processing the asset for a second. And it's incredible. It's really incredible. Um, you, you see the audio waveform, what's really important. And if we play back the audio for a sec, then the quality of the audio is very clear and we're able to even sync uh, our shots of the car to the beats. All we have to do for that is just select the clip, let's say this one right here, and it should end just at this beat. So we hit cut and then we can delete that by just hitting backspace at our next clip and see how the transition works. You see that? just changed to the other frame and the transition worked flawless. So that's really cool. And something that should be also be mentioned 
This software right here is for beginners, very intuitive, and I would definitely recommend it to any kind of beginner that just wants to create some basic videos. Obviously, if you want to go professional and do a lot more detailed editing, then I would refer to Final Cut or Premiere or DaVinci. But let's be honest, a lot of people out there that are interested in video editing they are getting overwhelmed by this huge UI, they don't know where to start, they have no stock images, they don't have overlays like here, you have motion assets that you can use that I'm going to show you right in a sec. And it's a lot more convenient than trying to pick up all these free packs from YouTube or even buy stuff just so you can showcase this little subscribe animation right here. And tell people that they should subscribe to your channel so i really like that and you can even scale those animations check if they are nicely centered by these yellow lines so that's very very intuitive we have texts that we can customize we can uh, customize this animation as well so we could just change the text from subscribe to any kind of text that we want so really really intuitive we have a lot of transitions that we can preview easily by just scrubbing through them, what's also very nice. And uh, yeah, a lot of effects that we can also add. We can add like a glitch effect that I'm going to drag on one of my clips for you to showcase. Something that I've learned within the first couple of seconds I've been into the program right here is that you always have to select the clip that you want to edit on. So let's say I want to edit this effect you see, I already tried to drag and drop it. I just have to click it. And then I'm going to resize it to the full frame and then we can preview. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty fun looking effect, but it's cool, it's cool. And we can just delete it by hitting the bin. And yeah, we were able to edit these uh, video clips quite easily. We are able to edit our audio. Obviously, we can adjust the volume. Yeah, the volume of our audio. We are able to add in fade ins and fade outs, uh, what you can see right here. What's also very fun and um, very important for all the basic editing. We are able to edit our colors. We, we are able to pick up some nice presets. I'm just going to track this and let's pick up this one. This actually doesn't change the color too much. So let's remove it and just pick one a little bit more crazy one and uh, see what we can else do. So yeah, it's with this, obviously we have to make cuts here and there and you can see that the color grading is very basic, but for you to adjust your brightness, let's say the video is just a little bit too dark and we can just hit the brightness just slightly. Uh, maybe we lost a little bit of contrast so we can get it back. And the image is just slightly edited and that's all we need. Um, as a pro tip from me uh, to, to, to end this, um, less is always more. Keep it basic. You don't have to be super professional. Uh, in terms of transitions and fancy looking effects. This might be something for the future, but with this tool, you will be able to edit your videos very nicely, very quickly and everywhere. Um, what you won't be able to do with a lot of the competitors. So that's really nice of Flixia that you have all these possibilities to, to work on your video. Obviously you can do things like adding a crop. Let's say I want these black bars to be just a little bit in the frame. This is exaggerated, but nevertheless, you have all these abilities. And uh, Flixia is actually, for me personally, really, really nice. And I would definitely recommend it for any type of beginner or person that is doing uh, basic videos and just wants a nice little editing tool that can get things done easily and fast. As you could see within the comparison, Flixia is quite fast and it's cloud-based, so it 
definitely has an advantage over the standard editing software Camtasia. To finish off this video, I only want to say I would definitely recommend this piece of software. If you want to check it out for yourself, you can check out the links in the video description. Thanks to Paul for reaching out to me and telling me about Flixia. I think this is definitely a really cool solution for people that don't have great hardware and still want to create some kind of content. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, definitely check it out. I hope you enjoyed this off script video. Video. I had quite some fun uh, playing around the different settings, getting to know Flixia just a little bit better. And yeah, I hope you, you enjoyed uh, the little overview we did together.